for you, Mr. Sir. First, let's give a big round of applause to Dr. Michelle and all the volunteers who put this together. <laughs> this is a wonderful event. And I would also like you to give another round of applause for yourself for taking the initiative to come out here on a Sunday and learn about health and wellness. Big round of applause for yourself. I know that you could be anywhere today rather than here. And if Golden State were playing at 1 o'clock, this room would be empty against Cleveland. So thank you, LeBron and Stefan, for having a game at 8 o'clock tonight. So we appreciate that. <laughs> so again, my name is Billy Davis. And uh, does anybody in here know who I am? OK, great. Well, one person. Excellent, excellent. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a 43-year-old fitness professional and entrepreneur raised in the, born and raised in the great state of Kansas. Anybody ever been to Kansas? Oh my goodness, one person. Okay, great. Don't worry, you're not missing anything. So, um, interesting thing about me, I was raised by two visually impaired parents. Okay? Uh, both of my parents were legally blind and met at a school for the blind. Now, this meant a couple of things for me. This meant we grew up without a car, so I walked everywhere. And when I got tired of walking, I had to go find a way to get a bicycle because we didn't have a car. So I went out and got a job, bought a bicycle, and started dirt biking everywhere because that's what you do. This meant a couple of things. One, I got ridiculously large thighs and hips, and donk and donk from that, all right? Now, when I was about 12 years old, my father, who's also vision implied, vision impaired, and my Uncle Richard were going jogging that summer, every night. They decided they were gonna jog about three miles. And I kept asking my dad, Dad, can I go, Dad, can I go, Dad, can I go? And he kept saying, no, you can't, you're too small. You can't keep up. And then one day, he said, I'm sitting on the porch looking pitiful, like 12 year olds do. My dad, my Uncle Richard come out for the jog, and he says, come on, come with. So, oh, yeah, I can go. So they took off down the block after a little bit of stretch, and I took off like behind them, like a bat. Just... Got to the end of the block and gassed out. Completely out of energy. And that's when my dad stopped me, he put his arm around me, and he said, Billy, this is how we're going to do this. I want you to look at the end of the block. I want you to see that, see that uh, trash can down there? Just get to the trash can. And then when you get to the trash can, look a little bit further, and in the next block, you're going to see a telephone pole. Get to the telephone pole. When you get to the next block, look for the fire hydrant. Get to the fire hydrant. And you keep doing that. And eventually, you're going to look up and you're going to see the house. Get to the house. I'm getting a little bit emotional because my dad passed away a couple years ago. My dad passed away from a bad diet. Okay? Which is one of the reasons I'm here. But it also speaks to the commitment that Dr. Michelle has. Because as I was reading through her book, she speaks about the same thing. Small, manageable goals. Now, an interesting thing about that story is... That little get to the fire hydrant, get to the car, get to the thing. That would actually lead me from running little three-mile joints with my dad to a Division I track scholarship for the, University, for the University of Kansas and a high school state championship in the quarter mile. Right? So these little bitty fundamental things that you teach your kids, these little bitty things, you never know where they're going to pop up. All right? So, some of you guys might have noticed I got a little bit of a limp. Anybody notice that? A little bit of a limp. Anybody know why? Two people. Excellent. Okay. The reason why I got a little bit of a limp, I'm going to just show this right here, is because I'm an above the knee amputee. I'm just going to leave that there right there. So five years ago, May 19th, 2012, I was involved in a really bad motorcycle accident. And I'll spare you the gory details because I can't do that in five minutes. But what I will tell you is, at the end of that five day, after that accident, I was in a coma for five days, I had 11 hours with the surgery, I flatlined twice, Four times. Four times? Four times. Four times. Thank you. <laughs> I woke up. First thing I asked for was a cheeseburger and a Coke. All right? That's really what happened. And uh, I almost immediately knew what kind of shape I was in. I would, I would undergo four and a half months of surgeries, about nine surgeries in all, rehab, occupational rehab, all over the place with Westchester Medical. And then I had to figure out what I was going to do next. And I decided to go right back into fitness. I was a personal trainer the day before I went down. I decided to stay a personal trainer. And I decided at that moment to commit my life to fitness because I already knew that being an amputee was going to be tough. But I knew being an out of shape amputee was going to be especially hard. And inside of that, I found a platform where I could speak to people and advocate for people with disabilities. Now, it was a couple of years after that that my father actually passed away. So I'm really, really steeped in this, which is why Dr. Michelle's book speaks so strongly. As many of you probably know, this, this country is experiencing an, epide an obesity epidemic. People of color lead the race. Uh, we lead the parade with uh, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, 
um, yeah, I mean, high blood pressure, you name it. We don't, as a culture, take very good care of ourselves. And some of it's nurture, some of it's nature, okay? But there are things we can do to reverse this. And to that end, there are a few fitness professionals out there who are really pushing to make a change in our community. I met Coach Lance earlier, who runs a Friday night fit fun, fit fun camp here. Dr. Michelle, whose book is amazing, and people like myself. So we're out here grinding, trying to change the trajectory of families. When I speak on the larger scale and I do keynote stuff, I always refer to the, the effect of the, the collateral effect of fitness. Okay? Has anyone in here lost someone in their family due to a health-related thing that could have been avoidable? Type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, these sort of things. And here's the thing you got to consider. When you lose somebody to something like that, or when you, I'll use myself as an example. When I lost my leg, it wasn't just me that lost my leg. My girlfriend lost my leg. My mom lost my leg. My dad lost my leg. When I go to my mom's house, I need a shower chair and extra crutches. When I go to my girlfriend's house, my girlfriend's parents' house, same thing. Extra care needs to be taken care of so I can sleep somewhere where I don't have to go up a million flights of stairs. So consider for those of us that aren't taking care of yourselves and you know who you are, that it's not just you. You're affecting your entire family and that's what we're here to change. That's what we're here to affect. That's the commitment and, and the vow that so many of us fitness professionals have taken in, in, in uh, the African American community. And so I want you to give a round of applause for people that are out there fighting that fight. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. Now, I met Dr. Michelle a couple weeks ago at a fitness retreat or a networking retreat in Florida. She took my boot camp. You wouldn't think a one legged guy like me could do a boot camp, but I think we were pretty, we had a good time that day, right? We killed it. 5 30 a.m. Get up, get at it. All right? Don't let the one leg fool you. I can kill people on this. In fact, we're going to run you guys through some stuff later. I know you dress for church, but sir, I expect a lot of push-ups from you. <laughs> but uh, we had a great boot camp that day, and afterwards, Dr. Michelle came up to me. She told me a little about what she was doing, and she mentioned that she had a book launch, and uh, my girlfriend, Nikki's back there. Hi, Nick. She's running support for me today. Uh, she got Dr. Michelle's book, and we read it afterwards, and it was an amazing read. And I love it because it was simple. You know, diet and fitness is not a bullet. It's not a, there's no secret weapon. So if you're out there looking for a pill or a drink or a cleanse or some kind of magic belt, or if you just rely on spanks to make you look highway proportionate, I feel like that's the laughter of recognition right there. That ain't it. You need to adopt a healthy lifestyle. And I love that Dr. Michelle advocates that. I also love the fact that she's about preventative health. Too many of our doctors are all about reactive health. You go to the doctor after you get sick. You go to the doctor after you don't feel well. Versus doing things that will avoid you having to go to a doctor in the first place. Okay? And I love that about her system. I love that about everything that she's doing here. You know, I almost feel like some of the things that she wrote in her book are things that I tell my clients. I know her, I had a note here, because a couple of these popped out that were really, really interesting. Oh, of course it disappeared on me. That's okay. So, things that we love about Dr. Michelle, she is passionate about living her best life. Passionate. Anybody in here doubt that? Exactly. And through that, she's committing to living lives that everyone in the community where she lives and works, impacting all those lives. Because, I mean, what's the, good, what's the good in having a great life if you can't share it with people around you? I mean, time is the most valuable commodity. We are living older in this country. We're doing things later in life. And what good is it to make it 10 years more than your grandparents if those last 10 years are of poor quality of life. I'm here to tell you, having worked with people from 8 to 80, folks, the wheels are going to fall off, no matter what. The wheels are going to fall off. The only difference is whether or not they fall off from usage or lack thereof. Now, me, personally, I'm committed to leaving a steaming pile of burnt-out corpse in the last day. Just, everything's just wrecked because I did everything I could as long as I could versus sitting in a wheelchair for the last 20 years of my life. Anybody agree with that? Exactly. Now, I do triathlons. Okay? I'm not saying everybody's got to do triathlons. But do something. Do anything. Get up and walk. Get up. Go to your community center. Get accountability partners. Find, find online communities. Go to your church. Most churches these days have fitness initiatives. Okay? And these are all types of things that Dr. Michelle talks about in her book. She's going to share with that in a minute. But before we go to that, 
Um, I'm gonna do, we're gonna get everybody, I'm gonna give you guys some fitness stuff that you can take home with you. How would you like some information you can use today that will help you out? All right, yes, yeah, especially this young man. You know what, I'm gonna have you come up and help. Come on, sir, what's your name? Come here. You look way too enthusiastic. What is your name, sir? Lewis, say hi, everybody. Hi. Everybody say hi, Lewis. Hi, Lewis. <laughs> I love this kid. All right, so I got Lewis and then, uh, I'm sorry, Elliot, yes. Where'd, where'd your friend? Oh, there he goes, trying to disappear on me. So we're gonna have Lewis, Elliot, and your name, sir, again? Drew. Drew, we're gonna help us out. I'm gonna give you guys a really, really basic routine that you can start with. Now, you guys need to understand a couple things. This is not a magic bullet. So I'm gonna show you guys some basic exercises that everyone in this room can do. That does not mean this is your fitness routine for the next two years. This is just something to get you started until you can get a few people together from your church group, your reading group, go to the gym, go to the pool, something like that. So, I'm a big fan of starting from the ground up. So we can start with just a basic squat, all right? So we're gonna just do basic body squat. So we're gonna start this out. You guys, give yourself a little space. You're gonna put your hands behind your head. Hands behind your head, okay? Behind your ears so you're not pulling your head. And you're just gonna give me a basic squat to the ground. Basic squat to the ground. Now when you're doing this, a couple things you want to notice, whoa, you want to try to keep your weight, come back up, just repeat, all right? You want to keep your weight on your heels, and you want to push your hips down and back and keep your shoulders over your hips. So try it again, gentlemen. Down, boom, and back up. Now try not to be on your toes. Now, is that chair, can I use that chair actually, Dr. Michelle? Never mind, okay. So, if this is too difficult for you, moderate, or uh, regression is the key. Dr. Lance, or Coach Lance, can I borrow your chair real quick? Thank you, sir. You're healthy. I know you can see it for a couple minutes. So if this is too difficult, for some of you it might be, who in here has got a knee problem? And the issue, exactly. It might be too difficult. So I'm going to sit you down here. Uh, Elliot, right? Okay. So one thing you might do is simply practice getting up out of a chair. So Elliot's going to plant his heels underneath his knees, proud chest to shoulders. He's going to lean forward, push off his, shoulder, off his heels, and stand straight up. Boom. Now when he sits down, he's going to lower himself down versus letting him fall like you do when you sit in your couch. Now when you sit in the couch, okay, so you lower yourself down. Hips back, hips back. Exactly. Well, you should come see me. All right? And forward. And back up again. Boom. And down. You're going to want to repeat this about 12 to 20 times. Make sure you're always pushing off the heel. Make sure you're always engaging your glutes, your butt, posterior. Something like that. Like I said, 12 to 20 times, depending on what you can do. Now, from there, I would assert, let's go to a different exercise. So, he's got to do 20 of those. Now, next, I'm going to have my, my young friend here, whose name just escaped me. Your name again? Lewis! There we go. So, Lewis, what I'm going to ask you to do is bend over and touch the floor. Bend over and touch your toes. Nope, with your hands. Now, walk yourself out to a push-up. Walk with your hands all the way out. Walk, walk with your hands. Walk with your hands. Walk, walk, walk. Now, don't move your feet. Just walk yourself out. There you go. This is called a bear crawl. This isn't exactly what I was going for, but you can do this too. Okay, so that's one. Good job, sir. Excellent. I'm going to have you help me out. Bend over, touch toes. I know, he's not, but that's why we do this exercise. Now, you're going to put your hands on the floor and walk yourself out to a push-up position. Okay? Now, with your hips up a little bit, so you're not, you're going to give me a push-up, but you're going to go slow. Come back up, squeeze the chest, down, squeeze the chest. You're gonna try to do about 12 to 20 of these, as slow as possible, as slow as possible, as slow as possible. Exactly, we want muscle over momentum. Now if these get too difficult because we've got back issues, who has back issues, okay? So in that case, we would plant our knees, plant your knees, Elliot, and you can push off your knees. Off your knees, keep your knees on the floor. Right. Now, if that's too difficult, you can literally regress this to where you're leaning against the wall. Okay? Anybody can do this. Now, from there, we've got the push ups, we've got the bear crawl walkouts. Another one you might want to do is a lunge. So, I'm going to have a big man here. You're going to try with a lunge here. So, you're going to think, you're going to take a giant step forward, low, no, stop, take a knee. So, here he's going to have his shoulders over his hips. And from this position here, we've got 90 degree angles. 90 degrees at the feet, 90 degrees at the, at the knee, 90 degrees at the hip. 
His shoulders are over his hips, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Now what I'm going to have this gentleman do, he's going to push off of his front foot and raise his level. So you don't have to step up. Just raise his push. Boom. And from there, go right back down. Keep your weight on your heel. If you're having trouble keeping your weight on your heel, you, here's a little trick. Raise your big toe in your sneaker. Just raise your big toe. Raise your big toe. And now try again. Notice how when he does that, he pushes off his heel. And back down. Keep your eyes forward because your eyes follow the head. Or your body falls in and back up. Boom. Where are you feeling that? Exactly. Keep going. Yeah. Good. Try to keep your shoulders over your hips. Try not to lean forward. He's already breaking a sweat. Right. You want to try to keep your head. As little movement as possible. That's okay. Good job. Give the gentleman a round of applause. Okay? Now, from there, we've done upper, we've done lower, we've done... This is called a peripheral heart action system, by the way. Working lower body, upper body, lower body. Okay? So then you got to find something else to work the upper body. We've already done chest, so we can do back now. Now, if you have weights, great. If you have resistance bands, great. You can do something just as simple as squeezing the back. So everybody, I'm going to have everybody do this right now. Someone has a gold Avalon that's blocking the front entrance. If it's your car, could you please move your car? Thank you. And you should lunge all the way out there. <laughs> all right, so again, if you were just to do these four exercises, repetitions of 12 to 20 at a very slow tempo, give yourself an honest 90 seconds between each, rest, between each circuit, repeat that three times or so, that's a nice little 10 minute workout that you can do by yourself that works your legs, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes, your chest, and your back. It also does a bit for your core as well. I won't get into the whole kinds of planks and stuff. You can talk, talk to Michelle and myself about that later. Okay? How was that? Any questions? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Another round of applause for our volunteers. You are awesome, sir. In fact, we gotta get you, we gotta get you some kind of thing. So before we go move on to the next part, we're going to have a couple fit questions. We're going to see you guys' fit, your fit uh, IQ, fit IQ. So this is going to do this like a game show. we got some prizes in the back. Who's managing our prize table? Okay. So we got some beautiful things back there. I see water bottles and medicine balls and yoga mats. So I'm not going to give away everything right now, but we're going to give a couple of things. So real quick, here's a question. Let me think of a good question. How many ounces of water a day should you drink? Eight. Eight ounces? No. Way more than that. 64 ounces. What's your name? Sherelle. Big round of applause for Sherelle. What do we have for Sherelle? Just come on to the back and pick something from the table. Roughly 64. Good, good, good. Consider, folks, that the human body is made up of 45 to 65% water. We are, in essence, flexible bags of mostly water powered by electricity. So you have to stay hydrated. And hydrated does not mean fruit juice, or coffee, or sweet tea, or Kool-Aid. It means water. <laughs> or sugary drinks. It does not count that. Okay. Um, another question. Good question. Here's one. Uh, yeah! What is the proper percentage of protein that you should have over the course of a day? Meat-based protein. Oh, okay. Yes, dear. 50% protein. You overshot it by just a little bit. Want we'll to try again? Go ahead. No, you're going the wrong direction. Anybody else? Okay. Still, still a little bit much. Yes, ma'am, in the back. 40 for protein. Now, I want you to consider these numbers that you're spewing out here, because here's what that looks like. If your plate is a circle, basically saying that 
Almost half of it should be meat. 25, there you go. Go back to the back and grab yourself something. Good job, good job. All right. Um, another fitness question, another fitness question. <clears throat> I'll make here, I get an easy one. Who is the fastest man on the planet in the 100 meter dash? Usain Bolt, go get yourself something. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, okay. All right, so I'm going to get out of you guys here and get to our guest of honor here. So again, Dr. Michelle the Fit Doc, I love this woman. I feel like we're kindred spirits. Like I said, in reading through her book, I saw so many things in parallel the way I treat my clients and discussions I have, and I am honored to be here. You guys are blessed to be here to listen to her speak. Um, she leads by example with weekly workouts between her patients and friends. Uh, she sets the tone by walking the walk. It's something a lot of doctors don't do. I know she's done at least two marathons, one in New York, one in Chicago. And if you've met her, you know, something? if you've met her, you know how awesome she is. I know the first time I met Dr. Michelle, I was absolutely captivated by her with a wonderful smile. She's got like the best smile ever. Right? Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Body. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I want you to get off your feet, clap your hands, stomp your feet for the fit doc, Dr. Michelle Reed.